Hello and shalom. Welcome to this episode of Image Bearers Radio. I'm your host, Joe Amon. We got a great show ahead, so buckle up and hang on. Here we go. Hey everybody, shalom, shalom. Welcome to this episode of Image Bearers Radio. You are listening to episode 136. I am your host, Joe Amon, pastor at Out of Ashes Ministries, coming to you all the way from Southwest Louisiana. And I hope that you are doing incredibly well today. I hope that your week is going well and that everything is wonderful. And you know what? Even if things are not wonderful, I hope that you're somehow, some way, able to find some silver lining, some blessing, maybe the way the hand of God is working, <clears throat> one of those things. And so, uh, I uh, spring is springing uh, here in the South, and so uh, we have a little bit of a reason to kind of have a little beat in our step. Uh, things are flowering, and it's beautiful, and so uh, we hope that life is going well for for you guys, thank you for uh, checking out Image Bearers Radio and uh, for being a part. So I want to first of all say, if it is your first time uh, being with us, you may be f- uh, checking us out on YouTube uh, because we got recommended to you. So if we did, hey, uh, or a friend shared our stuff with you. And uh, so if that's the case, thank you for following up uh, on their recommendation. Uh, or maybe you're listening on Hebrew Nation Online, uh, or you are listening uh, on our podcast or any other other places that this is uh, going out. If you are, then welcome to the show, and I hope that you enjoy your time with us. Uh, and um, this is just all about how to increase our image-bearing uh, potential as human beings and uh, how to honor God and to ask some different questions maybe than what we've asked in the past, uh, talk about the Scripture and our relationship with God in a little different way maybe than we have in the past. So that's what this show is all about. So hope that you enjoy the conversation. Now, for you guys that have been listening for a while, thank you, thank you, thank you for being an awesome community. Thank you for sharing these episodes, for promoting this uh, conversation, and thank you for the feedback. Always so, so wonderful to have you all uh, as a part of the community. And that's really what this is about. Um, Again, just a reminder, join us at 10 a.m. every Shabbat, 10 a.m. Central, uh, for our Shabbat Fellowship live stream where we have worship and prayer and teaching and the Parsha and uh, a whole wonderful service. We'd love to have you there either on our website, uh, outofashesministries.org. You can check us out there, or you can check us out on Facebook or on YouTube. We multi-stream to all of those different places. Uh, And so wherever you would like better, you can find us in any of those places. Uh, You can go to the website, and it'll take you to to all the different places anyway. So uh, that's all happening. Uh, Last thing I want to ask, something I started doing last episode that I haven't done a lot of, and I just want to be more intentional uh, about it because I think it's it just needs to be done. Um, you know, I am not the kind of guy that just puts out stuff for you to pay for, uh, you know, buy my teachings and stuff like that. I really, my heart is to create community. And um, so uh, community and family is about taking care of each other. And uh, we work really hard to, uh, you know, produce good content for you guys to study, to have resources available and all those kinds of things. And uh, I want to ask you guys to support the channel, support the podcast, support the channel, support the show. And um, you can go to our website at Out of Ashes Ministries. Uh, dot org slash give and um, don't listen to what I say listen to what's up there on the screen uh, and you can go there and give you can give a one-time donation you can give uh, regularly a reoccurring donation whatever uh, fits you guys um, we want to upgrade equipment we want to bring you better uh, you know quality and all those kinds of things so consider supporting the show. And if you would do that, we really uh, would appreciate it. So before we get going, as is our custom, let us go to the Father in a quick word of prayer. Avinu Malkinu, our Father and King, we are so fortunate to be here today. We thank you, Father, for all the folks that will be listening to this, either uh, in their cars or watching the video or whatever it may be. And we pray, Father, that you give us wisdom and guidance as we look to bear your image better in our world. We thank you. Amen and amen.
All right, guys, welcome back. So um, today we are going to continue uh, our conversation that we've been having, uh, again, based off of our services on Shabbat, where we've been doing this series called What Do You Want? And uh, again, I'll just kind of go through it really briefly, but this series started out as a uh, a, a challenge that I felt during Sukkot of this last year uh, from the Ruach to really increase our observance. <clears throat> and the the reason for that is because, you know, uh, especially as we come into the Torah walk as Christians, uh, as non-Jewish, you know, followers of the Torah, um, we don't have a lot of the tradition, a lot of the culture, and the things that go along with following the Torah. Now, some of you may be listening to this, and you may be going, yeah, that's exactly what we like, you know, is that we don't have a lot of the, the hang-ups and the trappings of, of Torah. We have our own stuff, which is Christianity, and all those traditions, and we know where that got us, right? Um, and, you know, that's, that's true to a point, however, that's also, um, I think there's usually a little bit of church hurt in there. There's usually a little bit of other stuff going on. When we say things like that, and that's okay, it's a part of the process, but uh, what we forget is that, you know, a lot of the things that we did in church, that we did in Christianity, uh, that were traditions, um, they weren't bad. They added to the actual keeping of the creed, uh, you know, keeping of the, the conviction and the, the, you know, our, our denomination state of faith, uh, statement of faith. And it, 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 it caused us to be able to do those things um, uh, you know, effectively, whether or not you agree with what those things are, that's a different conversation. But we we come into Torah and we don't have a lot of the things. And so we're left with like a scripture alone, Torah alone type of of, uh, of stance. And man, the Torah just doesn't have a whole, whole lot of details in some areas. And so it can leave us kind of frustrated and, and, uh, and kind of wondering like, well, what what do I do? And that can lead to an identity issue in that you go, well, like, yeah, I, I keep the Sabbath. I do a few things, you know, that the Torah says. I don't kindle a fire. I don't buy and sell. I don't work. I try not to work, but I really am not sure what work is. I'm not sure what constitutes kindling a fire exactly. Um, you know, and, and we, we, we do some of those things, but we, we have a hard time really getting steeped in Torah observance, because we have rejected a lot of the observances that the Jewish people have preserved and with and held onto for all of these years. Now, this is not to say that we have to come completely Jewish um, in our observance or in our halakha, but I think it is important. The challenge to to me, the Sukkot, to OAM and our group, the Sukkot, was that you that you at least learn the traditional halakha learn the traditional observance about, you know, the mitzvot and the, and the ones that, that we uh, really impact us, um, so that we can know, uh, kind of what the standard is. And, and then we know how far, you know, away we can deviate or, or what, and, and we know if we're not doing something that the Jewish community does, we know what it is and we know why. And that creates, I think, a more substantial and a, a stronger foundation and identity for us. Knowledge turns into wisdom, and that is always a good thing. So that's where this series started. And then last week, uh, I'm, forgive me, I don't exactly remember what part this is, but last week we ended up talking about, um, about our identity. And we really started to kind of hone in on the identity part of this because this series has gone from a, an observance and a what you do thing to an identity thing. And so um, we are going to talk for the next couple of weeks about identity because I think it's incredibly important uh, that we cover this because identity is going to be a major factor in how we talk about these things and something that I don't think gets talked about enough in our circles. So we said last week, that true behavior change, and we're talking about behavior in the sense of we want to become more obedient, we want to become more observant, we want to do the Torah better, and those changes, those are behavioral changes, um, those are identity changes. And so we have this, this weird two-sided thing where it's like, well, do I believe first and then act, 
or do I act first and in acting first, I start to believe and understand? And it's always this, it's kind of the chicken or the egg thing, right? And um, Christianity, I think, or most of us that come from a Christian background, we would have the tendency to say, no, we, we're supposed to believe and understand first. And then as we believe and understand, then we do more because we don't want to be deceitful, which is totally understandable, right? And, and right. However, the, I think on the Jewish side of the family, they would tend to more say, no, you, you do it. And in understanding and wisdom and belief and things come in the doing. And I think both of those are right. Um, and it just depends on how you're wired and how it works for you better, uh, but also kind of where you are. You know, if you're if you go like, yeah, I understand and I believe and, you know, et cetera, but uh, I need to start moving. I need to start doing something. Then you don't need to wait around for more understanding. You need to start acting. If you're a person who's like, I'm doing all the things, but I'm just not getting it, then maybe you know, you need to just not add anything else to your observance, but maybe you need to spend some more time in the understanding category. So none of these things are, you know, are right or wrong by themselves. They all have a context, right? So um, true behavior change is identity change. And we talked about the rub, right? That many times we will say we believe something, but we won't act in accordance with it. Or we do things that we don't really know if we believe or not. And there creates a rub, a dissonance. And the beauty of, of our growth is that when we are no longer seeking to get out that, that dissonance, we're no longer seeking to do away with that rub, but that we actually are the person that we say we are and doing the things that we say we, uh, we believe, right? So um, we, I want to move ahead just a little bit in my notes. And uh, we talked about a two-step process for changing your identity. And this is wicked smart, you know, wicked simple. Um, and it comes again from the book that we're reading uh, by James Clear called Atomic Habits. And he lays out a lot of the psychology of this. So I would refer you to the book if you're interested in more of the, the, the meat of what I'm sharing. Uh, I'm kind of taking it uh, off and summarizing it for more of a religious or halakhic or observance type of conversation. But if you're interested in the psychology of it all, he does a great job. It's super easy to read. Um, if I can read it, anybody can. So I would encourage you to get the book if you don't have it and start working through it. I think it'll really help and it'll supplement what we're, to, we're, we're doing here. So a uh, two-step process really uh, to changing our identity. And it's only two. And those two steps are basically, number one, you decide the type of person that you want to be, right? And we're going to talk a lot. We, we have talked some, but we're going to talk a lot about more self-inventory. Um, James Clear calls this a habit scorecard. Uh, but knowing where you are so that you can have a good picture, a realistic picture of who you are, how you respond, how is your observance, how is your obedience, how is the fruit of the Spirit in your life, all these godly and biblical characteristics that we want to emulate and to not only emulate, but to become the part of the fabric of who we are, it's important to actually take an inventory and see where we are right now, right? So that we can know the person we want to become. Now, this step is can be challenging for us that have grown up in a, a church background, because maybe for you, the ideal biblical person or the ideal Christian or the ideal whatever um, is kind of vanilla, uh, kind of amorphous. It's just like, you know, uh, that person is kind of kind of glowy and kind of like, you know, floats above the ground a little bit. Like, I don't know what that picture is for you, but we have to get a picture of the person we want to be. And we talked last week a lot about like, if you are a business person, then that's who you're supposed to be. You don't. You shouldn't wish to be a pastor unless you think that you're working outside of your calling. But if you are, if you know you're gifted in business and that where God is where God has you, then then strive to be the image of God in your business. You know, in your in your relationships, in your your you know your your sales force and all those 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 kinds of things. Strive to be the image of God there, um, and don't wish to be something you're not. But the ideal person for that calling for that job, right? So deciding the person that you want to be is step number one. And then number two is to, to prove that person to you um, by small wins. And, you know, the, the idea of atomic habits is not some massive nuclear explosion. The idea of atomic, atomic habits is something very small, small changes that we make over time that accumulate into something in real and something lasting, right? Um, and so the idea of, of small wins has to do with, um, you know, our identity emerges out of 
uh, our habits. And that can be a little bit backwards for many of us because uh, we have this understanding from the Gospels that Yeshua said, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, right? And so if a man thinks in his heart, so is he, then that means that um, everything outside, externally, my habits, my actions, my um, you know, my behavior, all of the stuff um, comes from what's inside. So I have to focus on what's inside, and I have to make what's inside right, then whatever comes out will be right. And, and to a degree, I agree. I'm not disagreeing with Yeshua. I'm saying that, that, that his statement has a context, right, in the whole um, chapter, etc., and so the, the, we have to understand it in context that, yes, that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So what we have to do is we have to line up, like we were just talking about, our beliefs, what's in our heart, our mind, what our understanding is with what we do. Those two things have to be congruent. They have to be in line, and they have to be agreed. And so, you know, we... We think that our identity emerges out of what we believe, but we miss completely. We 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 miss completely the idea that you know what we do actually has a huge impact on wh- how we think about ourselves and who we believe we are. Our habits are the. I know this word is uh, is kind of loaded if you've been in certain religious backgrounds, but our deeds or our habits or our observances, they are the manifestation of our identity, of what we believe about ourselves, right? And and the, the, the thing about humanity and the way we're wired is that the more we repeat a habit, the more we reinforce to ourselves that that's who we are. And uh, so we talked about this last week, but I just wanted to cover it again because I think it's so, it's such a powerful thing that if you're struggling with observance or identity, what you believe or what you do, if you're struggling in either one of those areas, it may be kind of a hack, uh, a mind hack to go, well, maybe, maybe my identity is not what I believe. Maybe I need to focus more on doing things that will help to really shore up who I believe I am. And so maybe, you know, you're doing Shabbat, but you're only doing a couple of aspects of Shabbat. Maybe you need to increase your Shabbat observance. And we're going to use Shabbat as, uh, as the example a lot in this series just because it's kind of the foundation um, and it is, uh, it's central to, you know, to our Torah walk as a whole. So uh, maybe, you know, maybe you're only doing a couple things. You're just kind of loosely keeping Shabbat. Maybe you need to really engage. And once you really add some observances to Shabbat, then maybe it will really start to feel like you're actually, you know, keeping and guarding the Shabbat. And so it has to do with what we what we do, right? Um, each, you know, each thing that we do, each observance that we do, you know, I, I've talked to many people in this walk, and I've heard a lot of this same thing over and over, that they kind of feel like a fraud. Um, people will start wearing tzitzit, uh, you know, a, a, a uh, tzitzit on their belt loops, or they'll start wearing a tallit katan, a small tallit, and they'll wear tzitzit. Sometimes they'll cover their head, uh, whatever. They'll start, you know, singing or enjoying more Hebrew worship and songs and stuff. But it can get to a point where it feels almost fraud-ish, like, like they're not really... And, and generally, um, that is because we don't trust ourselves. We don't trust... That's a, a, a rub where our identity and our behavior, our actions, our habits, our observances are not lined up yet. We're doing the things, but we don't know that this is who we are yet. And so uh, what one of the things that a habit or an observance or a halakha will do is that it will teach us to trust ourselves. Um, you know, when, when I open my eyes in the morning, I say, um, and, and as I do that more and more and more, I find that it it firms up my prayer life, you know? Um, it's just one of those things that that helps to add so much to starting off my day and going like, you know what? I love these prayers and I, and I want to do them uh, because it means it means so much. And so these these habits, these observances we do, you know, they're votes for our identity. And the, the way this works is, is really should be, you know, fairly common sense. But, you know, the let's just take Shabbat again for an example. If you, you know, if you don't 
observe Shabbat more than you do? And what do I mean by don't observe? Well, like maybe you miss candle lighting because you were working late or you got off and, you know, think Friday just didn't go as you planned. Uh, maybe you just didn't have a chance to prepare during the week or whatever. Um, maybe you, you know, you, you didn't light candles, you didn't have hala, you didn't even have a meal, so you ordered out. Maybe it was like eight o'clock, you know, before you finally ordered, uh, ordered food and, you know, to feed the family. And then you got up the next morning and it was kind of like the same thing as you do all the time. You got up and fixed breakfast. And then maybe, you know, you didn't make it to fellowship that, that week or you don't have fellowship. And so you Saturday and then you finally just kind of figure, well, you know, like, let's go to the mall or something. I, I don't know. Cause you, you, you see, you're, you're casting votes for who you are. Now, contrast that to all week you were really intentional about the fact that Friday night you knew the time, you knew sunset, you knew candle lighting time. Friday night we're going to be ready. Even if it's takeout, we're going to go get it early. We're going to, you know, stick it in the oven on keep it on warm, whatever. But at, you know, at candle lighting time we're going to light candles. We're going to say the blessing. We're going to have hala. We're going to pray over our family. We're going to pray over our kids. We're going to, you know, husband and wife, we're going to pray for each other. And and then we're going to watch a movie together, you know, whatever, or we'll read part of the Parsha or whatever we're going to do. And then Shabbat morning, we get up. We already have breakfast. You know, we have pastries or something that we bought earlier in the week. Um, and we're going to get up and go to fellowship or we're going to tune in online, you know, or we're going to, uh, you know, to a ministry. We're going to do something like that. And you're really intentional. That is casting votes for for you being a, a, the identity of a Sabbath keeper, right? Then you can you look back on the last couple of weeks and you tally the votes, and you go, well, you know, we didn't we didn't we weren't intentional about Shabbat more than we were. So that tells me either subconsciously or consciously that we're really not Sabbath keepers like we say we are, and that actually like you may even actually think like, man, wow. You know, we left the Sunday church, but Sunday, some people in the Sunday church were a lot more dedicated to their day, which is not the day of worship, than we are to our day, which is the day, right? And it can really create a lot of conflict. It can create a lot of back and forth for you. And that's not where we need to be. We don't need to be dealing with conflict and wasting our energy on conflict. We need to be pushing ahead, right? We have Yeshua and the Ruach. HaKodesh, and we have the instructions, we have everything we need to, to be image bearers, right? And to fulfill and maximize that image bearing potential. And so these votes mount up. Now, the cool thing about the votes is that you can elect a new identity. And so if you continue to be intentional about Shabbat and you do it week in and you do it week out and you, you're not going to you're not going to be perfect by any means. You're not going to make them all maybe, but maybe you make three out of four. Maybe the next month you make four out of four. Maybe the following month after that you make four out of four again. And then a month comes by where you're busy and you got two out of four. The, the votes add up and you can change your identity. You can change the identity that you vote for by what you do, by the actions that you take. That should be so empowering. That should be so exciting for somebody that you have the ability, you have the authority to line up with what Hashem already called you, holy, set apart, right? Kadosh, uh, you know, God-fearing, on fire. God already called you a new creation. You, you have the authority, the ability, the, the, you know, the responsibility to line up with what God already said. And you, if, you, if you're failing at a lot of those things, you alone have the identity to, to put some votes in the, in the category of the identity you want to be. And the vote is the habit. It's the halakha. It's the observance. It's, the, it's the, the thing that you do. It's the piety, right? It's the doing of religious activity, religious commandment keeping. And I don't mean religious in a bad way. I mean religious in the best possible sense of the word, right? So as the votes mount up, the evidence for who you believe you are begins to change. And then all of a sudden now you are starting to walk in a new identity, right? The thing is, you don't have to cast the right vote all the time. The majority of the time is good enough for a good, setting a good direction for identity change. So when we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about this two-step process uh, as we begin to change our identity. So thanks for sticking around. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back right after the break.
All right, everybody, welcome back. So we are talking about the two-step process to identity change or to change. Um, and, you know, I just, something I said last, last segment I really want to focus on because, you know, I, um, I have struggled with this for a long, long time. And I want to make sure that, uh, that I, I kind of drive this home for you, that, you know, we, you have the power to change. God, Hashem, has already called us all the things we could ever desire to be. He's called us new creation. He's called us restored, redeemed, rescued, uh, you know, uh, holy, priest. He's called us all these things already. He's already declared that we are. And most of us believe that those things are true. We believe those things about ourselves. We cerebrally, mentally, we have gone like, yes. I agree with the word of God. I believe that's who we are or who I am. And yet it's not complete because we haven't acted like it. And so that's where we really want to focus and increasing the observance. That's where the observance really comes in. But identity has to be dealt with first, right? Um, so the big questions, um, you know, these are big questions. The, the Who do you want to be? Well, you know, just take a look at the Bible. My goodness. Uh, the Bible says, you know, you could read it like, well, the Bible wants me to be perfect. Golly, I got to be full of patience and grace and kindness. And I can only do a certain amount of things at a time, right? <laughs> and so we did talk about that last week. I'd encourage you to go back and listen to that episode because it was really, really, really packed with a lot of this fine detail and stuff. Um, but the bottom line is you don't know, uh, maybe, maybe you don't know how to become that kind of person, but you know the results you want to get, right? So you know the results you want to get. You know what you want life to feel like. You know you how you want your friend relationships to go. You know how you want your marriage to go. You know how you want your your kids and your household to act. You know the results that you want. You know in your in your personal life how you want your prayer life to be, your discernment to be, your you know your usage and the gifts or whatever whatever it may be, right? And so we're we're really gonna focus on uh, the type of person that would get those results. Um, and uh, I told you a few weeks ago, a few shows ago about, you know, my um, uh, my whole excursion into quitting dipping. Um, it's very, very tough. Hardest thing I've ever had to do probably. But it began with me telling myself, this is not, you're not a dipper. You're, this is not who you are. And that became an identity thing that as I began to tell myself that and believe that, then it really helped the process along. And so... I wanted to be the kind of person that wasn't tied to that addiction, right? And so then we 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 have these this person that we want to be, or we we want the results that that type of person gets or would get, and so we have that, and that's great. That's all you need to start. Um, that's the starting place, and that's that's exactly where you need to be. So we start there, and we work backwards, and we go, okay, if we know the results that we want to get, we go, what kind of person gets those kind of results, right? Because the idea of the concept is that the identity-based habits is the key to unlocking all of this stuff. And what we're going to find out about and what you're going to find out about as you start implementing this, again, I I just wish that, um, does any, anybody remember there's a toothpaste commercial, uh, and I can't remember which one it is now, but it's the guy with the flip top, it's a cartoon with the flip top head, right? He brushes the back of his teeth. I so wish as a teacher, and I'm sure any of you that are, that are religious or just, you know, private public school educators, homeschool, you know, moms and dads out there that you teach, you instruct at any level, um, you will understand this. I wish there was a function on humanity uh, I wish that I could open the top of my head and my teachers could just pour information in and I wouldn't have to struggle with it and wrestle with it to get it. It would just become a part of who I am, right? And I wish I could do the same thing with identity for you. But the truth is that I can't do that. And the truth is that as we've said before, which is a strong statement, not even God can do that for you. God has done all he can in trying to give you a new identity. He's declared, he's done the work. He's declared it. He's, you know, he's promised it. He's given you the spirit as the seal and as the empowerment and the, the leading and guiding. He's done just, he's done everything that he can. Um, the only thing he can't do is make you receive it and make you start to act like it, right? So this concept of feedback loops is going to become very, very important as we walk through this. 
and not it's not going to be important as I talk to you about identity and about observance and 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 getting to be the person that you want. But feedback loops are going to be important as you start to implement the changes that you want to see, as you start to implement halakha. So the feedback work, uh, feedback loop rather, um, works in tandem. What we, we talked about the two sides of your habits and your identity, or is like your understanding and your observance. Um, you know, do I have to think I am this before I start doing it, or can I do it without understand? You know, the, that thing. These feedback loops are going to kind of help to bring those two parts together. They are the key that's going to uh, get rid of that rub, that dissonance, and and make you a cohesive person. And so uh, an example of a feedback loop is, let's say that uh, we're talking about Shabbat. Let's say that, you know, you really want to, um, you want to be the kind of person that really values, and we use the word intention, you really value and you're intentional about Shabbat, right? That's the kind of person you want to be. You want to start there. Yes, there's 600 and, you know, some odd other commandments by, you know, some counts are more than that if you count it differently, but um, there's a whole bunch of other commandments that you need to get to, right? Sure. But this is the one you're focusing on right now, and that's okay. It's okay to not, you know, uh, this is not kosher, but how do you eat an elephant, right? One bite at a time. And so maybe Shabbat's the one you're working on. And a feedback loop is when you when you are intentional about planning, you accomplish the habit, the ritual, the observance, the liturgy that you want to, uh, that you know is going to help. And when you do it, it reinforces who you are. It's a feedback loop. And then you do it again, and it reinforces it again. And every time you get reinforcement, you get more votes cast for that identity, and it just builds and builds and builds until like that's who you are, and you don't feel like a fraud and a phony anymore. So feedback loops are super, super important. And the beautiful thing about the feedback loop is that it it uh, it bolsters your identity, and then a bolstered identity makes you want to makes you be- helps you to believe that you can do it again which bolsters your identity even more. And it just continues. It's a cyclical effect, right? It's a stacking effect. So your habits shape your identity and your identity shapes your habits or your observances, right? Um, and so the it, it's important to let, um, let... One thing to say about feedback loops is that it's important to let your values and principles drive that feedback loop system um, and not your results. This is super, super, super important. I am, uh, I'm a little bit neurotic about some things. Um, not, uh, it's weird because I'm not like hyper OCD. Like my truck can be a complete garbage pile and I don't care. Um, you know, it can be dirty on the outside and the inside doesn't bother me. Um, you know, if, if the house is not, you know, exactly tidy, I mean, it doesn't, it's it's not, but some stuff I'm really neurotic about. Um, and, and I can, I can be the kind of person where if I, not I can be, I am, because I know my wife's going to listen to this. She's going to say, you said can be you, this is who you are. (laughs) I love you. Um, I am the kind of person that if I don't, if I can't do something well, not well. If I can't do it almost perfectly the first time I try it, then there's a 99.9% chance I'm going to walk away from it and never try it again. Um, that's just how I am. I've been like this my whole life. If I'm not good at something the first time, then I'm not willing to to even suffer defeat again. <laughs> um, or I'm not willing to put in the work that it takes to get good at it. And so, you know, with few exceptions. So, um, this is a, a very important statement for me when talking about feedback loops because your feedback loops is that your your habits are going to tell you. If you don't know who you are, you, look at what you do. That's why these assessments, these inventories, these audits are so important. You're, you are getting feedback all the time from your environment, from people around you as to who you are. From your own actions, you're getting feedback as to who you are. Listen. But don't let results be the driver of your continued pursuit of change because you are not perfect and you will not be. You're not going to bat a thousand. 
you're going to have the best of intentions probably more than you're going to have the best fulfillment of those intentions. Let's say that again. You're going to have the best of intentions more than you're actually going to fulfill those intentions satisfactorily, right? And so you may have the absolute best of intentions at doing Shabbat better, and you may do it three weeks out of four, but that fourth week, don't let that fourth week torpedo you because your values and principles are that you are a Shabbat keeper. You are a guardian of Shabbat. It is the day that your life revolves around. Let that be your guiding. And if that is your guiding, if that's the lens through which you audit your feedback, then you'll continue to grow every single time, whether you succeed or fail in fulfilling that intention. And so let your your principles, let your values, let your intention be the guiding factor, not your results. Really, really important, right? Because the, the, the goal is to always be becoming that person that you envision that does X, Y, Z. That's the, that's the goal, right? Um, and so the, the first step is not always how or what to do. It's not processes. It's not outcomes. It's not system changes always. The first ground level is who, right? So you may say, well, okay, but so you're saying to change my identity, I need to do different stuff. So I'm going to get on it and I'm going to write a list and I'm going to, we're going to start doing different stuff. But wait, don't, don't forget that you have to have a who in mind first. Who gets the kind of results you want to get? Then when you have the who in mind, then you can start changing the systems or the outcomes. The, 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 the big kicker to this is, is that Failure is around the corner if you don't have a who in mind. Because if you're only focused on the the what and the how, when failure comes and you don't live up to that, then you're going to get discouraged. And then you're going to want to quit. But if you have the who in mind, if you have the, the, the ideal picture of who God has called you to be and that is your driver, then when inevitable failures come, you realize that it's just a, it's just a part of the process because the who is still there, right? Um, the, the focus should always be on the, the, the kind of person that gets that result, not the result that you've gotten, right? Um, beautiful point that, that Mr. Clear brings out in the Bible, I mean, in the book, excuse me, that I just have loved thinking about so much. He says, your identity is not set in stone. And it's just a passing, you know, sentence in one of the chapters. Um, and I just, it, it, it's so helpful and free. Your identity is not set in stone. Like we talked about earlier, who God calls you to be, yes, God has called you to be that. Um, and if you're not that, the great news is that identity is not set in stone. You are the vote caster. You are the one that casts the votes for who you want to be. Um, you, you know, you can choose each day, um, and you can choose to be agile, choose to be able to move, choose to be able to change. I, you know, I, I, I spent a lot of time around older folks growing up and, you know, the thing I heard constantly all the time was, well, at my age, you know, I'm not going to change. Well, at my age, I'm set in my ways. Well, at my age, you know, we're a, at our age, we blah, 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 and all this. And I heard it from family and friends and pastors and mentors. And it's just like, you know what? That's, that's the reason you can't change is not because you're too old and it's not because you're setting your ways. You may be setting your ways. The reason you can't change though is because you're not agile. You've locked yourself down and you've said, this is it. And you've refused to be agile in the way you want to reinforce the change and, and reinforce the person that you choose to be, right, with good, healthy habits. So we talked a couple weeks ago about uh, the three levels of change. So on, we remember it was concentric circles, which I'm real big on. Uh, if you've listened to us OAM for any amount of time, you know that. But um, the outside, you have outcomes or results, 
You can change those. Or in the next one, you have systems or processes or observances. You can change those. In the center, you have identity, right? Um, and, and we want to focus on identity for now. We'll get to the others as we progress through these conversations. Um, when we talk about changing habits, it's important to, to frame this correctly. When we talk about changing observances, and I think this is so important, especially in the religious or spiritual realm, that when we're talking about changing observances, please understand that we're not talking about some life hacks. We're not talking about like, oh, you want your life to be blessed? Then you need to light candles every Shabbat, and that guarantees your life will be blessed. Blessed being this amorphous term that we really don't know what it means. Well, does blessed mean that I never get sick? Does blessed mean that I always have more money at the end of the month? Does blessed mean that my kids, you know, follow Yeshua and follow the Torah, et cetera, et cetera? What, you know, this, that, this, is, this ain't that. Um, this is not some kind of life hack thing where, oh, your life's, you know, I'm not a sleazy televangelist, sorry. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a, a you know, I'm not a, a guy like that that's trying to sell you something with a promise of a better life. That's not what this is. We're talking about people who already understand that the commandments are for us. They are for our teaching. They're for our good. They're for us to, to, to guard and to do. I'm talking about those of us doing better at that. And I hope that you understand if, if, if you're understanding, please let me help you. Let me save you a lot of heartache and time and energy. If it's your understanding that life is really bad right now. And so if you start doing all these commandments, life is going to change and it's going to be great. And it's going to be a field of daisies all the time. And that God's blessings and favor are just going to, they're going to drown you then this, this is not for you. Um, what, what needs to happen in that, uh, in that avenue, and if that is you, um, you need to be deep in prayer. You need to be around people that can help you. But most of all, you need to take control of your life by doing some of these habit things, but probably not in a Torah sense. Maybe you need to implement some of these strategies in your finances or in your emotional well-being or in your mental, you know, uh, your mental health or whatever, in your prayer life, in your scripture study, in your church attendance or your, your Shabbat, fellow, you know, your fellowship attendance, whatever it may be. But just keeping the meets vote, I, I believe they are for everybody and they are essential to our walk and to our faith and to our health as a whole person. But these are not a magic salve that we rub on things. So I don't want us to think about this as life hacks or, you know, um, uh, something like this. It's, it's about, it's about looking at the, the, the image bearing again, potential and responsibility and vocation that we have and, and becoming that person. It's not about external results. It's not about, oh, I got the perfect husband, or oh, now I make X amount of money, or oh, now I drive something around a car, or you know, whatever, a house. Or it's not about that. It's about uh, it's about becoming. Um, it's about uh, you know, fundamentally changing who we are, okay, and being somebody rather than having somebody or something, right? It's about becoming someone. Um, our habits, our observances, this, you know, I keep using the word habits because that's how the book talks about these things uh, and how psychology will talk about them. But I want you to understand every time I say habit, we covered this in our first or second session, um, I mean observance. I mean observance. I mean what you do religiously, what you do Torah-wise. Um, what you do Torah-wise matters because it ultimately becomes the type of person that you are. It ultimately writes the script for the kind of person you desire to be. And so, you know, if you want to be a better Sabbath keeper, you can't do that without doing something. And that something is Sabbath observance. And so the ways that you increase that observance become who you are. You quite literally become your observances. And this is so, this is why this series is so good to me. And it's so powerful because. We don't have to guess at how to become XYZ person when it, when it comes to Torah observance, when it comes to image bearing. We don't have to guess. 
the the script is literally given for us. We have to be better at doing it. And you can start at Yeshua with the Beatitudes. You can go to the fruit of the Spirit. You can go through the Torah, starting with the Ten Commandments. Wherever you want to go in Scripture to find instruction and teaching, which is what Torah is, right? You can do that, and and it's already given to us. We have the roadmap. We just have to be intentional about doing it because our observances, our religious habits, the liturgy that we spend our lives doing literally becomes who we are. And so... It, you know, and so if you if you're interested in prayer, I would suggest, highly suggest, um, that you invest in a siddur. Um, siddur is uh, is the of course the Jewish prayer book. Uh, siddur uh, comes from the word seder. It means order, right? And so this is the siddur that we use here at OAM. Try not to get a glare on it. Uh, this is the Koran siddur. Uh, and this is an older version, if it'll focus. Uh, this is an older version, the Koran Siddur. Um, the newer version is called the uh, uh, Shalem Siddur. Uh, and if so if you're involved in prayer, you love prayer, I would encourage you to get a Siddur and start reading it, start looking through it. Man, it will just, it will expand your prayer life so much. It's beautiful, right? It's beautiful. And so th- these things, th- these things are about our habits becoming who we are and us becoming our habits, right? Uh, so we're going to kind of wrap up, start to wrap up in, in summary uh, and, and talk about what we've talked about kind of the last couple of weeks. And so um, if we, you know, if we, we kind of think about what we've talked the last couple of weeks, the most effective way to change our habits is not to focus on what we want to achieve but to focus on what we want, who we want to become. You can focus on what you want to achieve. You can focus on, I'm going to keep Shabbat every week, but when you fail, it's going to set you back. But we want to focus on who we want to become, the type of person we want to become. Our identity emerges out of that, right? The who first, who first. And then every action, remember, is a vote for the, the person that we're trying to leave behind or the person we're trying to become, right? Next, the best version of yourself requires you to continually edit your beliefs about yourself and to upgrade and expand your identity. This one is huge, and I love it. We didn't spend much time on it this week. We talked about it a lot last week, but you have to continually, don't get attached to, to one version of yourself because that's not where you're going to stay. You're moving, you're growing, you're changing. That's what alive people, that's what living people do, right? We change. And so in order to change, you kind of, you have to constantly edit your beliefs and expand your identity. And identity. And then lastly, the real reason habits matter is not because they get you better results, although they can do that. You might end up marrying Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright if you change some things. You might find the perfect Shabbat fellowship if you change some things. You might come into some financial blessing if you change some things, but that's not the point. You can change your outcomes, your results, but you change your observances because you're changing your beliefs about yourself. You're doing an identity project, and that is what is the most important. And so you're changing your identity, you're changing who you are, and that's where you want to be. The results will come as the identity changes, okay? I promise you. The peace, the the foundation, the stability from an identity standpoint will come as you continue to increase and change your habits, right? You will feel less of a rub between, well, like, I'm not a Jew. I'm not, I don't know if I'm Israel. I don't know really who I'm, how much should I be, what should I be doing? I don't know. I feel uncomfortable around family and friends because I don't know how to talk about it. All that changes as you start to change your habits, you change your identity, and they reinforce one another in a feedback loop. So I hope this has been helpful. I pray that you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. Hopefully we'll see you guys on Shabbat. And until then, have a great rest of the week. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.